Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Stranger Things Season 4 has been announced with a super cryptic teaser that doesn't even tell us so much as a release date, but in other less literal ways, it tells us so much more. Like, I'll take a tree clock over an explicit plot summary any day. So I'm gonna break down the tree clock and this whole teaser for all of its imagery and missable visual clues, and the various hints we've received about the fourth season of Stranger Things from the final episode of Season 3 and the series' creative team. Spoiler warning, in case any of my theories or predictions end up being right. Let's get started. Okay, so the teaser begins with just a simple title card of Stranger Things 4 with the series title music, but then it flickers out, switching to negative colors, and then bam, the title's now in the upside down and it's filled with clues. so a lot of stuff to point out here. To the right of the title is a Welcome to Hawkins sign, the one that can be seen on the town border, and the reverse of the one that Joyce, L, Will, and Jonathan passed as they left Hawkins in the season three finale. The words, we're not in Hawkins anymore, appear on the screen, which you could just read literally as a lot of them have left the town, maybe to somewhere like Chicago. But I think the contradiction here suggests that this is the upside down version of Hawkins. The wording is obviously a nod to the Wizard of Oz. I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore and plenty of thematic parallels between these two properties, the departure from a youth's domestic world to a surreal fantasy world with mirrored elements. You can see Hopper's cabin in the background on the left, the front porch light mysteriously flickers out, and on the ground in the foreground is a discarded newspaper, just a bit too tough to make it out, and then of course on the left is a clock embedded in a tree trunk. There appears to be a smear of blood on the clock's face, and it ticks away in the short clip right as it hits midnight, it chimes. So what can we learn from all this? Well, those chimes are the first four notes in the common eight-note melody in many old-timey clocks, notably the Westminster chimes of Big Ben in London, which is believed to be a variation of the fifth and sixth bars of I know that my Redeemer liveth from Handel's Messiah. And you could read into that to interpret a hint that Hopper, the seemingly dead Redeemer of the season three finale, actually liveth. But even if you don't buy into that clock chime history connection, there is definitely grounds for Hopper still being alive. Season three ended with a post credit scene of a Russian base where a prisoner is thrown in a cage with a demogorgon, and in that base there was another cell that contained, according to subtitles, the American. And many believe that that American is Hopper, who could have jumped into the rift into the Upside Down right before the explosion that seemingly killed him. Perhaps the Upside Down dimension overlaps spatially with our dimension to allow another access point in Russia through which Hopper could have traveled to end up in Russian custody. Hopper's final words to Eleven in his written speech could have also been a clue. For the sake of your poor old dad. Dad, keep the door open three inches. In this case, the door could refer to the rift to the Upside Down. In the months since season three has dropped, Hopper actor David Harbour has been up to some curious social media behavior. Actually, let's break down Hopper's Twitter happen in a new Rockstars tweet down. Okay, first notice how Harbour's profile banner image is art of Hopper, literally upside down, suggesting the character could be in a place that's like this. Also, at one point, followers noticed Harbour changing his avatar every day to a new number, creating the string of numbers 618-625-8313, which in season three was the exact phone number of Murray Bauman, the fringe conspiracy theorist that they brought Alexi to. And if you call that number, the show set up a voice recording of Bauman saying this. Hi, you have reached the residence of Murray Bauman. And this is Joyce. Joyce, thank you for calling. I've been trying to reach you. I, I have an update. It's about, well, it's, uh, it's probably best if we speak in person. It's not good or bad, but it's something. I'm guessing by Harbour's tweets that Murray's something is related to Hopper. And Murray, as a Russian speaker with Soviet contacts, might have come across something in his research about an American in a Russian prison. But it's interesting to me how this teaser focuses so much on time as a motif. Notice the clock ticks up to midnight before it cuts to black. It could be a nod to the doomsday clock, maintained by scientists throughout the Cold War as a way to convey how close the world was to nuclear annihilation, which they set as midnight. Season one of Stranger Things took place in winter, 1983, 
3, Season 2 in Fall 1984, Season 3 in Summer 1985, so that might suggest that Season 4 could take place in 1986, at the time of year that they haven't done yet, Spring. And if you know your history, April 1986 was a time that the world was arguably closer than ever to nuclear disaster, the incident at Chernobyl. So does this mean Stranger Things 4 will be set in the historical backdrop of the Chernobyl tragedy? Uh, well, now that Craig Mason's Emmy-winning HBO miniseries showed us all how horrific those events were, a Goonies-style adventure with Pripyat firefighters getting buried in concrete might come off as a bit tone deaf. So instead, I think this clock might be pointing in a slightly different direction, though with similar elements. Time travel! I know, I know, after Avengers Endgame pitching time travel as a nerdy theory, it's just a bit done. But time travel is also one of the big sci-fi tropes that Stranger Things hasn't explored yet, despite making some big references to it. Season 3 staged a major sequence to the backdrop of a screening of Back to the Future. Hopper's letter also used some choice words. To turn back the clock. And note that in that post credit scene, the Demogorgon is alive, but no date or year is provided. It could be a new Demogorgon or a resurrected somehow after its death, or it could be taking place before all the events of seasons one through three. If the physics of the interdimensional upside down allow for the bending of the laws of space, perhaps it also allows flexibility on the axis of time. What if Hopper's journey into the upside down actually took him back in time to Soviet Russia, like the late 70s, a period in which we learned the Demogorgon was their creation, that they released into this dimension, divorced from space and time, to appear years later in the United States in 1983. And if you really want to get tinfoil with this, maybe Hopper is the Demogorgon, like after his flesh was transformed, also in an earlier time, also in Russia. Like, we don't see this American in the post credit scene, we only see the Demogorgon. And if you think about it, the Demogorgon is a weirdly rogue being in the Upside Down. It's this realm that's otherwise only populated by the Mind Flayer. Like, I just think there's a lot more to the Demogorgon story that we don't know yet. But if time travel is a possibility in Season 4, the Upside Down could be revealed to be not another dimension, but another time. For example, Hawkins after a nuclear or biological weapons disaster that left it a lifeless void with raining radioactive ash and mutant plant growth. And that machine that opens the rift is not a portal across dimensions, but forward and potentially backward in time. If so, the Stranger Things kids could use these mechanics of time travel to rewrite history. Save Hopper, save Barb, save Bob, save Billy, save Alexi, save everyone they've lost, save the whole damn world, and reset 1980s history the way we know it to be in our reality, without insane international conspiracies and sci-fi crap going down in small town Indiana. Now, hopefully we'll see a release date of sometime late 2020, but until then, or whenever this comes out, what 80s movie plot device do you think could inspire Stranger Things 4? Comment down below with your thoughts, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Boss, and subscribe to New Rockstars for breakdowns of everything you love. Thank you for joining me, and if Hopper equals time-traveling Russian Demogorgon ends up being right, that's uh, quite a character arc.